This is <clears throat> the Torah portion of this week as explained by the Lubavitcher Rebbe in 1991. Parshat Kitavo. Okay, should I do the um, the summary? Let's say the summary. Here. It explains that the whole idea of exile, the Jewish people are not in the land of Israel and they don't act like Jews, they don't think like Jews. The whole thing is not relevant to the Jewish people at all. Why? Because the true place of a Jew is supposed to be, it says, <clears throat> at the table of his father, in front of God, in the holy temple. That that God made the thing that we're in exile and we've been here for like the last 2,000 years is in order to arouse us, a, the Jewish people, <clears throat> that they should reveal in the world that the Jewish people are different than everybody else. We are what's called God's first fruits. The Jewish people and God are totally one. And by means of this, this will immediately, as soon as we recognize who we are and the world recognizes who we are, then this will immediately stop the exile and take all, all the good things that are concealed to be that are found in exile will be revealed to make gola. Gola means redemption. Shari gola, I'm sorry, la so me gola to make from exile geula redemption. Just revealing the hidden aleph, which is there. You just have to add on the aleph into it, and becomes that's the idea of chuva. Okay, that's a general summary of what we're about to learn. Our Torah portion begins with the commandment of Bikurim, of first fruits. Wait, how, do, how does our Torah portion start? It starts like this. And it will be when you come into the land of Israel and you will uh, you'll in, 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 inhabit it and you will settle in it, then you have to bring the first fruits, the first fruits of your produce. You have to take them and bring them to the temple. You have to bring them to the temple. Uh, I, like we said before, the temple was only built 440 years after the Jewish people entered the land of Israel. But after they left Egypt, they always had a tabernacle with them. And it was about a year after they left Egypt, they built it. But the tabernacle was with them in the desert for 40 years. And then when they came into the land of Israel, and they came into the land of Israel, <clears throat> it was <clears throat> in, uh, what is it, in uh, Gilgal, and then it was in, in um, where, anyway, it moved to Shiloh. For some reason, I always forget this. Then it moved to Shiloh, and it was there, and Shiloh was there for like 369 years. So it was there, and then afterwards it moved to, moved to Nob, and it moved to where, to, to, um, to Gimon, 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 no. In any case, it was there for, uh, uh, until the Holy Temple was built. But nevertheless, they always had a, a, some sort of form of a temple. The tablets were there and there was an altar that was there. But so it says, as soon as you come into the land of Israel and you have first fruits, so you have to bring these fruits to the temple. You have to bring these fruits to the temple. And you have to say vidui meiser, which is, by the way, what we say in the um, the, the the Passover night is is just a <clears throat> explanation on the sentences that they say here. Okay, so it says this is the first fruits. They come to the land of Israel, and that in this is a hishlim Moshe. This now Moses is completing the explanation of the Torah and the commandments which God commanded them. That was begun on the 11th day, the Echad the Chodesh, 
etc. And Be'ever Yordain Be'eretz Moab. Right, so this was all said to the Jewish people. Moses began to explain the Torah on the Ashtay Asay Choresh on the month of Shvat. He started explaining the Torah until it came to Is that right? Yeah. Um, other, yes. Until they came into the land of Israel. Moses began to explain the Torah to them until they came to the land of Israel. And this is like this, the, the finale. This is the finale that Moses says, when you go into the land of Israel, you're going to take the first fruits and bring them to the temple and say this statement that, 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 that uh, thank you, God, you've brought us here, you saved us. From you saved Abraham, you saved the Jewish people up to now. Moshe now talks about, after he finishes this, then he goes back and talks about general ideas of the commandments. Like we just finished. Learning in, in the Kuti Torah. The covenant that God made between God and the Jewish people, and etc. Right? Amarta, Hamircha, on all the Torah messages. But this is sort of speak the last commandment that he gave. This day, God commands you to do the chukim, these laws and the mishpatim, and you must do them with all of your heart and all of your soul. Right? That's the sentence we just learned about in Lakuti Torah. And afterwards it says, Shalmarat Kalim, it says, do all the commandments that I'm commanding you today. So here we have the commandment of bringing the first fruits. And that is, so to speak, the last of the actual commandments that Moses commanded. Then he, afterwards he starts saying general things, making a covenant. This is the day that you're going to go over the, the Jordan River into the land of Israel, and you're going to make these big stones. And you're going to write on these big stones all of the Torah. And it says the whole Torah, the written Torah, should be written on these stones in 70 languages. What type of a thing to do is that? That's what they had to do. Who knows the 70 languages? Nevertheless, they had, they knew the 70 languages. Moses knew all the languages. He wrote the Torah on these big stones. Haskesu Shema Yisrael. Listen, Jews, this day, you have become a nation for God. Vishamata, and you should listen to the voice of God. This and do all of his commandments. And afterwards, in the continuation, it says in long length about the covenant which God made <clears throat> with the Jewish people between God and the land of Moab. Moab, that was the place where right before the Jews went over the Jordan River, they were in Moab, Arbot Moab. This was the covenant that God made with the Jews in addition to the covenant that he made at Chorev. Chorev is Mount Sinai. We, we just learned about these things in, 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 in Lukuti Torah. Until it finishes the, the, the Torah portion. You should remember this covenant and do them in order to skilu. You will have wisdom and know everything you should do. And in the middle, he throws in these 98 curses that says, oh, by the way, Jews, if you don't do what I say, then this is what's going to happen. And then he goes back and he says, but don't think about that so much. Just do the commandments and everything's going to be okay. But Tochen, this is also drawn into next week's Torah portion, Nitzavim, and then afterwards, Vayelech, and then afterwards, Hazino, and then Zota Bracha, we read on Simcha Torah. Well, Dubar, I was speaking not just about the commandments, but about the covenant on the whole Torah and the commandments and the general things which are made. Okay, so this Torah portion, it begins with the last commandment that Moses gave, and that is to all the Jewish people, and that is first fruits. Bring the first fruits. You have, you're a farmer. You have first fruits. Only from the seven types that are Israel is blessed with pomegranates and grapes and olives and uh, and olives and figs and dates. You have these first fruits. Bring them to the holy temple. Make this beautiful statement, right? Thank you, God. You saved Abraham. You saved Yitzhak. You saved all of everybody. And then you took us to, to this holy land. And now we're giving. 
And that's that's the last commandment. And after that, Moses talks about general things. God is going to be with you. You have to watch what you're doing. Keep the keep the, 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 the covenant that God is making. God's going to help you. You have nothing to worry about. Don't be afraid of them. Right? But if you don't happen, you don't do what God says, then it's not going to be good. You're going to get scattered all over the world. But don't worry, God is going to gather you together, and etc. Okay. Since this commandment and this covenant and all of the Torah and the commandments comes after the last commandment, which is first fruits. So we have to say that there must be some sort of a big connection <clears throat> between this commandment of first fruits and the covenant that God makes with the Jewish people to do all the commandments. Somehow or other, this commandment of first fruits is also a general commandment that includes all of Judaism. And that's why after this commandment, it's the last, first of all, it's the last one. It's given to all the Jews. But after that, God just speaks general things about the covenant and how much he loves the Jews and how much he's always going to care for them and that he, they have to watch themselves. But general things, they all come after this sort of under the heading of first fruits. Bufrat, and especially Lafi Pirosh Rashi, according to what Rashi says, that Hayom Hazer, that it says to this day, right, right after he finishes talking about the first fruits, it says, Today God is passing you through this covenant, what we learned about in Lukuti Torah. Rashi explains that this is talking about Ushamartem Asitamotam. This is the blessing which comes because of doing the first fruits. Bat call, it says that as soon as you <clears throat> bring your first fruits to the holy temple, a voice comes out from heaven, a bat call, like an echo, whatever, comes out from heaven. It blesses him. Habat <clears throat> blesses him because of the bringing of the first fruits. Today, this year for the next year. I was giving you a blessing just like you brought him this year, so you'll bring next year. The Eternum is even more. <clears throat> a brief, I'll call all the Torah of Mitzvah, the covenant on Torah and the commandments was said, and that same Torah portion, this covenant is said in this Torah portion that talks about the first fruits. Hatchalat at the beginning is talking about the first fruits. In the beginning, and the beginning of everything, especially when people speak, how much more so in holiness, this is the title, and it has a special connection to what's going on, what's happening. So you have a title of something, you go to a lecture, you want to hear a lecture about how to be happy. So everything that's going to be afterwards you have to eat properly, you have to, you have to think properly, you have to have proper friends, you have to breathe properly, get enough sleep, you have this. All this is under the, the title of how to be happy. So to speak, also the same thing, this covenant that God makes with the Jewish people to remind them an extra covenant, in addition to the one they made on Sinai, it's under the title of first fruits. What's so special? What's so special about first fruits? First of all, it's not such a general, it's not a general commandment. What type of general command? First of all, it's only for farmers. Only for farmers. It's only in the land of Israel. Only in the time when the Holy Temple was there. It's not such a general commandment. Why does it say, why is this one chosen as the title for all the covenant that God makes? We'll see. Surah 11 says the Rebbe, what's the connection between the Bikuri and this first fruits and the covenant? that God makes on all of the Torah and the commandments. <clears throat> all the Torah commandments, on the receiving of the Torah and the commandments, and all the, time, the Torah and the commandments. At first glance, Bikurim, this mitzvah of first fruits, he mitzvah pratit. It's a very, very singular, and how do you say, um, uh, there's a word for it. It's, it's a very... Um, um, 
uncommon commandment. Specific. There's a better, there's a better word for it. I can't think of the word. Uh, a very exclusive. Oh, there is the word. It's a very exclusive commandment. It excludes a lot of people, a lot of Jews. First of all, it excludes any time when there's no holy temple. It's only done when the holy temple was there. And it's only from the seven types from the land of Israel, right? Like I said, figs and dates and olives and grapes. That the land of Israel is praised by. Omina Muvharn has to be the best of the fruits. Well, you have a bad crop, doesn't come out, you don't do it. Davka Mish Yeshlo Karkan, it has to be a farmer. And it has to be a farmer in the land of Israel. And it has to be good land. It has to be good, <clears throat> good pro productive land. The aim Korin Mikra Bikurim. And only for even when there was the Holy Temple, and even in the land of Israel, and even if you were a farmer, Bikurim is only a very certain time of the year. But right? it's only for a very, it's only from the holiday of Shavuot until Simchas Torah. Right? So that's like what, four months, something, three months? Or even more, Ma, what's the connection with Hayom Azeh Hashem Lokecha? That today God is commanding you that this refers to all the commandments, that with them all the Jews are, command, are, are commanded all the time in every place, like Rashi said, and every day they have to be in your eyes like brand new. It's all the commandments. So, how can they, the title of it, and now I'm going to teach you about the first fruits, and what are the first fruits? The first fruits are. All the Torah, all the commandments, all the why that, that's the that's first fruits. <clears throat> Maybe it should be the other way around. So I'm not going to tell you about all the commandments. One of the commandments is first fruits, but it's not that all of the commandments are under the title of first fruits. Why? So the Rebbe is going to show us why. <clears throat> first of all, another question. God Sorglav, and we also have to understand, but no gay relevant to the name of this week's Torah portion, keep Tavo. Parsha Kitabo, we've spoken many times regarding to the names of our Torah portion, that the na name of the Torah section that we're reading, it expresses the content of that thing, which is read, that it's the whole name. Again, we're talking about titles. The title of this week's Torah portion is P Tabo, when you come to the land of Israel. According to this, we have to have an explanation, how does this generally indicate the content of our Torah portion, ki tovo. The idea of tovo means coming in. Coming in of the Jews to Israel. At first glance, this is only just a preparation to doing the commandments of first fruits. First fruits are not done when you come in. It's after you come in. What's the name of the portion of the Torah? When you come to the land of Israel... And you have fruits. What, what do you mean when you come to the land of Israel? When, you, when you're already, not when you come in. After you're in the land of Israel and you have fruits there. But here it says, Ki tavo, the moment that you come in. That's the name of the portion. The name of the Torah portion is the moment you come into Israel. Ki tavo al the moment you come in. It says the regular, the moment you come in, there's the, the, you haven't done anything yet. You certainly didn't plant. You don't have any fruits. The moment you come into Israel is not that you, have, you haven't done anything, right? What have you done? They didn't even divide the land up yet. They didn't settle in it. Shitzarichim the Kayim, you have to first, the, the, the growing fruits, first fruits, and doing all the commandments, there has to be after you came into the land of Israel. Nevertheless, the whole Torah it come, is called and it begins with, and it begins with this commandment of first fruits. Ad gamma brit until there's a commandment on the whole entire Torah is called Tavo, the moment that you come into the land of Israel. With this is just a preparation. This is just a preparation for doing all the commandments. You haven't really done anything particularly. You just crossed over a certain border. You haven't planted or plowed or 
Okay, so we have, we have, if so, the Rebbe is trying to point out to us that there's something really very important that we don't understand here. And that's why we have these questions. And as soon as we understand it, we'll jump up like to a higher dimension of understanding. And then the questions, we'll realize why they were questions because we didn't understand something very important. Here we go. The whole idea of bringing first fruits and declaring thanks to God because of the first fruits, this is a recognition. We're appreciating that from God, comes, call a brachos bolom. All of the good that is in the world is coming from God. Birchas Kodesh Baruch the blessing of God, Mivi brings the Yehudi, a Jew, at the Shefa, Hatavua, the produce, the successful, bountiful produce of fruits of the field. Therefore, he's giving the Kodesh Baruch to God, Mereshit Kal Pri Adama, the first of his fruits. Mereshitam, Mearishonim, from the first and the best of his fruits of his field, that usually he'd like to, you know, take this and bring it home and eat it on Shabbos or something. No, you have to bring this to God. Why? Because it belongs to God. I, one second, what do you mean it belongs to God? I did all the work. I plowed. I planted. I worked hard. I had to weed the place out. Right? I had to, 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 to fertilize the ground and I had to water these plants all the time. And I had to worry about them all the time. And now I'm giving thanks to God. Who says I should? It's, oh, that's exactly the point. That's exactly the point. First of all, <clears throat> where did the success from? Who said that plants have to grow from the ground? That's not nature. That's a miracle. And who said that you have the energy to plow the ground? That's not taken for granted. That's not nature. That's a miracle. I mean, you can say for sure that it's nature. For sure. There's a, there's a lot of farmers in the world that don't believe it, that are atheists, total atheists, and they, grew, they grow beautiful fruits, and their families are happy, and they sit around the table, and, you know, upon the you know, huge, whatever it is, the grapes and, and figs or whatever it is, and, the, and they, they, they eat, they're happy. I don't, is it not, Jewish people aren't that way. Jewish people aren't that way. The Jewish people say, listen, everything I have comes from God. Everything he comes from also comes from God. I have the opportunity, I can thank God for it. That's by me a, a, a bigger gift than the fruits. I'm thanking God for it. We have to thank God for then all of a sudden you get around to the point of one second, not only the fruits, but things that are obviously from God. My eyes, my nose, my mouth, my scent. A, a normal person will say, what are you talking about? That, that's part of nature. Dogs have eyes. Tadpoles have eyes. right? Protozoas, I don't know, have eyes. They have some sort of sensory system. It just developed into you. What are you giving thanks to God? Right? So you can say, yes, you're true, 100%. 100%. You can definitely say that. And it's more logical to say that, that it's just nature did it, than to say God, because you have to postulate God. You can't sense God in a, in a microscope or something, in a telescope. But the fact of the matter is, is, no, that's the whole purpose of the Jewish people, to take people out of nature and to give thanks to the creator, because in fact, there is a creator. In fact, there is. You don't have to believe him if you don't want to. But there is a creator. And that's the whole idea of the first fruits. The first fruits is giving thanks to God for everything. Everything comes from the blessing of God. Therefore, I'm giving God my first fruits, from the first and the best of the fruits of my, and I'm grateful to God. And I am not an ingrate, huh? ungrateful. Is it a word? Un ingrate. Avor, because of Haperos, the fruits, uh, that God gave me a blessing, Avor Chasadav, and I'm not ingrate. There must be a better word for it. Anyway, I'm not uh, the, the denying the kindness of God that He gave me fruits, even though it's very easy to deny that God did it, and maybe 99% of the world does deny that God did it, and maybe it could be 99% of my personality says, "What are you thanking God for? What's the point? What do you?" Here you see nobody else thanks God and they get along good. But I'm going to go against that. I'm going to defy nature and give thanks to God. 
That's why we say Vanita Vamarta. That's the purpose of the Jewish people. Could be that's one of the reasons the Jewish people are there's anti Semitism because everybody knows that the Jewish people are here to remind us, to remind the whole world, <clears throat> don't necessarily follow your nature. <clears throat> Could be your nature is good. You have to look in the Torah and see. <clears throat> but not necessarily, your nature should not be your guide. That's what we just talked about, making God the king. <clears throat> if make God a king, we admit that, listen, God, you know better than me. I'm going to do what you want. That's what it says. You say before God, you superior, you should say, talk about the kindness of God. That's what it is, this declaration that we make. This feeling of giving thanks to God because of his kindness, it says the Torah of Amiras, a, a Toda, and saying thankful, I'm saying thanks to God, giving praise and, 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 and gratitude to God for them. This is a general thing in the life of a Jew. The word Jew is Yehudi, comes from the word Hodaya, giving thanks. Hechel, this begins from Miyad immediately, as soon as you wake up in the morning. By means of the recognition, the awareness, and the declaration, you say, The Rebbe wanted this to be said in all the schools in, uh, in America, the, the, the public schools. Thank you, God. I am grateful to you, God, that you gave me back my soul. This is the foundation and the gateway for serving God in general. Namely, gratitude to God for everything we have. And this is the idea of, um, of blessing God and praying to God, serving God. You say, no de al yom al masurim biyadech, al achayim, I'm sorry, al chayenu. I have to get glasses. Al chayenu on our life that you that we put into your hands. Giving thanks to God in a specific way, it all comes from this general way of giving thanks to God. As soon as we wake up in the morning, we say, I am grateful to you, God, great king, that you've given me back my soul. You can look in the Siddur, you can translate it, you can look it up in Modani. Everyone should say this in the morning, as soon as you wake up, even before you get out of bed, you sit up and you say, Moda, I am grateful to you, God, living uh, king, that you gave me back my soul, in mercy, your faith in me is great. The al and the wonders and, and, and the good that you gave us all the time in the morning and the evening, and the blechas ananim, all the other blessings that we say in the course of the day, the kolyum every day, because of all the good that we receive from God. This is mainly the blessing after eating. We say that God provides for the whole entire world with his great kindness, even more, even the non-Jews, that they believe and they recognize that God is the creator of the world, and they recognize that God is the king of the world, is also a necessity that they should give thanks to God because of food. There's a family, people say grace before meals, they pray before meals, they give us. This is a wonderful thing because the same God that's creating the Jews is creating everybody. It's one, only one God. The Zem Mudgas, this is stressed even more, of the famous story of the Baal Shem Tov, the story of the Baal Shem Tov, that it was brought in detail by the Alter Rebbe, that everything, the creation of the world is brand new every moment, every day and every moment. Shezeu chesed believe bilti mukbal, this is the unlimited kindness of God, that he's creating the world, that zebora ha'olam, the call nibra for every creation. Shemashpial al anivra, Every single bird, every cat, every wind, every the, 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 uh, atom is being created by God all the time. And this brings to us a very deep feeling of appreciation. Shahu, namely, that me and everything around me totally depends on the kindness of God. And God gives it for free. Ah, oh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the commandment of the first fruits. We also find the big novelty, namely what? a very deep and general recognition to God. A Jew expresses his feelings of toda, of thanks, toda to, of his thanks, to God, avor, because of chazdov, his great kindness, 
Lorak Badibur, not just in saying, Ella Mavate et Zegamba Maisim. He actually brings his first fruits to God. When we wake up in the morning, we say, Thank you, God, for giving me back. So we're just talking. Right? And in our prayers and in our thanks and our blessing after eating and before eating, we give thanks, we just speak. But the novelty of the Bikurim is that it comes in deed. These farmers actually bring the first fruits to the Holy Temple. It takes from his first fruits, and he brings them to the Holy Temple. To the place where God shows to dwell his and make his name dwell there. <clears throat> you put the first fruits in, in the Holy Temple. And you let them rest in front of God. But this thing, this expresses the complete uh, recognition in Hashem, or it's that God is the owner of the world and everything in it. Or in simple language, this is not our world, it is God's world. You can't do with it what you want. On the other hand, you're not responsible for everything that happens. You're responsible for whatever challenges God presents you with, <clears throat> but the whole world is in God's hands, and God is good. So whatever happens in the world, somehow or other, is for the good. And I'm very well aware <clears throat> that there are catastrophes and tragedies and famines and evil, a lot of evil in the world right, that exists. And of course, but nevertheless, this is somehow or other, and we can talk about it, but let's just talk about it in our personal lives, our personal lives. You can always find something to be positive about. Always, no matter what the situation, there were Jews that were in Auschwitz, they lost everything, and they could always find something to be positive about, if they wanted to. Always something to get out of. Something when they get out, they're going to do X. They're going to do Y. They'll write a book. They'll have a, 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 a build a house. They'll do something. Everyone can find something good in everything to be thankful to God about. Says so that's what we have to realize that the world belongs to God. Everything that happens belongs to God. And that God is good. You call that everything is relevant to God. Yehuda Eino Mistapak, a Jew, is not just satisfied with a blessing that he blessings, uh, blesses about all of his possessions that comes with God. But what he shows, he just denied, he shows, he brings the first, he does something. He brings the first fruits that the, the, after he receives this blessing from God. So he says, it's not mine, it belongs to God. In fact, all everything I have belongs to God. Because the God has everything. God just says that I can use these things. Okay, and therefore, who may be at the ratios? Therefore, I'm bringing the first of my fruits in front of God. And it remains in God's possession. This action, this deed of bringing, actually bringing first fruits in front of God in a time when, it, and it remains there, this permeates Baomic Yotar even deeper in a person that brings these first fruits, Shiyakir Oyoto, that he'll recognize even more, the Yafnim, and he'll internalize this, Ajiyargish, until he will feel, Shakulo, that he himself, the call and Nimsa Brashuto, and everything that I own is really not mine. Everything is really brought in front of God. Cave and since Davos, and therefore you can be rich. You can be, it says that, that what is it? That uh, Rabbeinu Hakodesh, that he was one of the people that was, that the Talmud says that he could have been Mashiach, that he was in, infinitely rich. He had everything, uh, not infinitely, I mean, he had amazingly rich, tremendous riches. And nevertheless, he said before he died, he said, listen, you, my hands give testimony. And I didn't get any personal pleasure from anything. If I dressed up nice and the finest, it was only because I was a king and I had to make a good impression on people. If I ate the finest foods, it was only in order to show the God's blessing, whatever. It... And that's the idea of bringing the first fruits, doing a deed that expresses 
not just in thought, not just in speech, like giving praises to God and blessings to God, which is very good, but also in deed. That's the whole thing of the Holy Temple. You actually went to a physical place. That's the idea of Judaism, that this physical world is holy, and we express it by means of doing things. This permeates in the whole existence of a person, all of his garments, until it has an effect that this deed that he does, he brings the first fruits, this permeates even deeper than any speech he could possibly say. In fact, he does speak. Afterwards, he says you should answer and you should say that the, the, that God you took Abraham out of Egypt, you took Yaakov out, you saved him. Sha'omer Zod Bakal Ram, you say it in a loud voice. Anita, the Anita, the Haram is called. It says, Anita, whether you should answer, means you should lift up your voice and you should say it in great joy. You should be happy. So that's the whole, if you want to call it the title of the Torah. Be happy and do things for your creator because the whole thing belongs to him. And that is the general title of all of the covenant between God and the Jewish people and through them the whole entire world to make the world into a happy place as we'll talk about more God willing tomorrow and now let us do the yom yom